All right, Hotep, how's everybody doing today? Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, researcher, lecturer, and writer, and historian. So I'm here in Detroit. I'm at uh, Focus Hope 1400 uh, Oakman Boulevard uh, in Detroit. We're here. Uh, it is Saturday, November 30th. It's Small Business Saturday. We're here for the bank bi Black Business Buyout. The Black Business Buyout is going on 11 a.m. to... Uh, 8 p.m. today, 11, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. today. Uh, it's free and open to the public also. So there are going to be a number of vendors here. We're already set up. How you doing, uh, Sabir? How you doing, Sabir Bay? My man, Sabir Bay. I haven't talked to you in a while, Sabir. We got to get in touch with each other. Uh, we got Lat uh, Latida as well. So we know that a lot of people are going to be out supporting small businesses uh, today all across the country. And you want to definitely do that with African American owned businesses as well. How's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. You invite your friends to tune in also. We got Clifford. How you doing, brother Clifford? And we should be broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. I'm not sure whether this is on my personal page or uh, the fan page. Let's try to see here. Where are we? Oh, this is on uh, my personal page. Okay. All right. So this is uh, so I'm set up here also. Uh, the African History Network, and and be sure I'm not sure if you all saw the uh, broadcast I did. Uh, I did a broadcast on Thanksgiving Day, dealing with um, what was I dealing with? I was dealing with the history of Thanksgiving, okay, and I was also dealing with the National Day of Mourning, the National Day of Mourning as well, which started in 1970. So check that out at our at our website, uh, on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and check it out also on uh, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel. So we know that some people uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, but others don't. And as we learn more about history and learn more about African history, uh, we know that less people start celebrating uh, Thanksgiving because they understand the real history of, of uh, Thanksgiving and how what people thought or what we've been taught was the first Thanksgiving, how that is not actually what happened, okay? When we deal with the uh, quote-unquote pilgrims and those Wampanoag uh, Native, uh, Native Americans, it was 90 warriors, uh, the Wampanoag uh, led by Massasoit, who, and because of the treaty that the um, because of the treaty that the pilgrims uh, who are on the Mayflower have with the uh, Wampanoag Nation, okay, there's a treaty that's signed in uh, 1621 for them to watch each other's backs. So when, and you have a uh, uh, Native American who's of the Patuxent Wampanoag Nation named Squanto, and Squanto is one of the main ones who teaches them how to plant corn, uh, how to fish, things like this, but how to survive, okay? And you're going to have you're going to have a celebration that takes place where the uh, the European settlers, the pilgrims, they're shooting off guns, shooting off cannons, and they have a feast. The Wampanoag hear this, and Massasoit, who's the leader, he comes with 90 of his warriors to find out what's going on, and because of that, then they end up staying and they stay for this feast. And they end up staying, they camp out like three days near where the European settlers are and have this feast. So the painting that we see of the European settlers serving the Native Americans, we don't know the real history behind that painting. The way, that, and that's in 1621, the way the painting is presented is a misrepresentation of history, all right? so. We have all my DVD lectures here. We know a lot of people are out supporting African-American-owned businesses, so come by. We're at uh, Focus Hope, uh, 1400 Oakland Boulevard here in Detroit, 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. today. We have the information on our Facebook page, uh, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, and our fan page, the African History Network. How's everybody doing today? Those in the Detroit area, how you doing, Jerry? Those in the Detroit area, come on out. Okay, Sabir is in Tunisia. Okay, he's in North Africa. All right, and Tunisia used to be called Carthage. That's where you got Hannibal Barca. Okay, you had a Battle of Canaan, 216 BC, Hannibal Barca fighting against the Romans. All right, one of the greatest military strategists in history, Hannibal Barca. 
okay? Uh, and we know that the Carthaginians are descendants of the Phoenicians. The Carthaginians are also descendants of the Garamantes. And we know that the Moors are descendants of the Garamantes as well. There's a whole deep history there. Read Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Dr. Ivan Van Sertum also. Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Dr. Ivan Van Sertum. All right, guys. Um, check out the broadcast. Let me see. What was the last broadcast I did? The last one I did was dealing with... Uh, Thanksgiving. I also did one before that dealing with um, the uh, North Carolina School Board in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Forsyth Winston-Salem, North Carolina School Board. Check out the broadcast that I did dealing with how uh, they refused to have a mandatory African-American history class because I go deep into what happened there and actually they have an elective African-American history class. And a lot of people, when they report on what took place, don't talk about that. Go check out that broadcast as well. Marquita Moore, how you doing? All right, so let me show you again some of the, I uh, have all of my latest DVD presentations here. We've got, uh, let's see. We've got my presentations dealing with uh, the real history of Juneteenth, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Civil War. We got uh, the little known history why African Americans switched from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. A lot of these DVDs are discounted today. We have all, basically all of them at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have some special online discounts as well. So visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. We got Black Migration 1619 to 2019. And even though August 20, 1619 in Virginia did happen, African people been in this country, we call the United States of America, going back at least 51,700 years. So also have ancient Africans in America before Native Americans, Columbus, or slavery. You got six principles of political self-defense, understanding how laws and policies impact the economic conditions of African Americans. Now, a lot of people don't know that we used to dominate horse racing. You know, the first Kentucky Derby was ran in 1875. It was won by a 19-year-old African American man named Oliver Lewis. This is Jimmy Wink Winkfield, who won the Kentucky Derby in 1902. You have other Kentucky Derby winners, like Isaac Murphy as well. But there was a concerted effort by white men who were jealous to unionize and to force African American men out of horse racing. Uh, we've got my uh, uh, presentation dealing with the film Harriet, okay? Uh, and uh, we, uh, we deal with the controversy between Harriet, but we'll also break it down from a historical perspective as well. And I provide a lot of historical sources to do more research on Harriet Tubman, uh, the Underground Railroad, slavery. Most of what we know about Harriet Tubman, most of what we learn in school is false. And, you know, African Americans and Americans in general don't understand the history of slavery either. Uh, we've got uh, before 1619 to 1526 when the Spanish were taking Africans into South Carolina. Um, and so when you see my table, you see we've got the banner, Great African, Great Black Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. All this is also available at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, and we have my presentations dealing with the history of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, understanding ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. So we deal with thousands of years of history. That was about seven years of research. And I deal with what led up to the transatlantic slave trade happening in the 800-year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. Because you have to understand the history of the Moors in Europe which is going to uh, bring Europe out of the dark ages. And this is going to lead to uh, Columbus setting his cell on his four voyages. This is going to lead to the transatlantic slave trade happening, but also it leads to Columbus uh, helps to uh, spread the transatlantic slave trade as well. And you got to study people like Right Reverend Bishop Bartolomeu de las Casas and uh, uh, King Charles V of Spain, who signs the Asiento de Negros in 1518. All, all, these, these are all things you got to study the uh, Dumb Diverses, the um, uh, Doctrine of uh, Discovery 1452, the Papal Bill of 1455, Treaty of Tordesillas 1494. All these things are going to uh, expand the transatlantic slave trade, help to fuel it. And, so, and we also have to understand the chronology of how all this happens because the Portuguese are the first ones who get involved right about 1441 in the transatlantic slave trade. They're followed by the Spanish. The English come later. So we know that uh, even though 1619 in Virginia took place, the Spanish were taking Africans into uh, the territory we call South Carolina 93 years before that in 1526. We know that Juan Garrido, 
who was a Spanish conquistador from West Africa, born in 1480 in West Africa. He comes into Florida in 1513 with the Spanish conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon. Juan Garrido was of African descent. So this is probably the first person of African descent that we know of by name, Juan Garrido, 1513. This is before Jamestown, Virginia. But like I said before, this was our land stolen from us. African people have been in this land going back tens of thousands of years. These were the Khoisan, who have the oldest DNA on the planet, come from Southern Africa, go all around the world, they're the ancestors to the Ainu and the Twa. And this is who Dr. David M. Hotep talks about in his book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. All right, so come on down. We're here in Detroit at the uh, at Focus Hope 1400. Uh, 1400 Oakland Boulevard, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday, November 30th. It's a free event, Black Business Buyout. A lot of vendors here as well. It's just starting. Uh, also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, okay? Uh, or at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button. We have a Black Friday, a Black Empowerment Friday weekend sale because this is the time to really recycle dollars with our own businesses, okay? Because I, I hear people talking about boycott Black Friday. Black is in Black Friday. Why wouldn't you use that weekend to circulate dollars with black-owned businesses? That makes no sense. That absolutely makes no sense whatsoever, okay? Um, but that's a whole nother topic. Our, our, our minds, the, the way our minds are wired, they're not wired to create wealth. They're not wired uh, to flourish in business, okay? We, we, we focus on withdrawing economic support from white-owned businesses, but don't focus on redirecting that energy and those dollars to support African-American-owned businesses, okay? So we have to be rewired. You know, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you've been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Okay, so your thoughts create feelings, your feelings create actions and behaviors, your actions and behaviors create results. So we have to, we, we have, our, our mindset has to be rewired, and we also have to study our rich history of cooperative economics, read books like Collective Courage by Dr. Jessica gordon Emhoff. You know, The Wealth Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough is good, I've read that also. But I've also read Collective Courage by Dr. Jessica gordon and Emhoff, and I've interviewed it before, and this deals with our rich history of cooperative economics in the co-ops, the Free African Society of 1787. The Colored Farmers uh, Union of 1886, right? The uh, Colored Merchants Association in 1928 that comes out of the Negro Business League founded in 1900 by um, Booker T. Washington. So there's a whole rich history of us using co-ops and, uh, and cooperative economics, which are principles we brought with us from Africa as well. But many of us don't understand this history, okay? So read the book Collective Courage by Dr. Jessica Gordon Nemhard, M-N-E-M-B-H-A-R-D. And in my Kwanzaa presentations, you know, I deal with uh, some of the history of African Americans and cooperative economics, the co-ops. Uh, we were even we were doing this even during slavery, and we were raising money through the co-ops to buy people out of slavery. To uh, we're going to uh, use the co-ops to. Uh, help people save their farms, all different types of things. We have a deep, rich history of that. All right, look, I got to get out of here. Remember, the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now, let's correct wrong behavior. Uh, it's not over till we win Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.